everybody. Going to do some uh, chainsaw milling again today. Today's video, we're going to try to focus on the idea of getting really accurate chainsaw milled lumber. Not just have a board, but something that's very uh, high quality dimensional lumber. Now, this first rail slabbing system, um, like this, I have a previous video about it. I was just going to detail a little bit more about it today. They can be used in a very accurate uh, manner. Um, in, in my particular application here, I utilize these brackets that, um, there's four of them for this nine foot rail. And there's three actual segments that bolt together. And then you have four of these crossover pieces here. When I purchased it, I was thinking that the system was going to be more rigid than it actually is. And when I found out that it's kind of flexible and any flex yields uh, inaccuracy in your dimensional lumber, I thought, well, maybe I could reinforce it with angle iron. But then that kind of does away with the um, portability and the lightness and, and all that. So instead, I thought, you know what, is there a way to adjust for the flexiness? And one of the things that I do with this particular first rail system is I utilize two carriage bolts right here and one lag bolt right here. So the carriage bolts have a nut on the top and bottom and then the lag bolt is what secures it down. So it's kind of like a tripod effect right here, there, there, and at the end. When I initially set it up I just put the two lag bolts down on each end, kind of like field goal posts upside down, and that provides the overall basic um, initial uh, leveling. And then I take a uh, short level and I put it across here. Now, having it perfectly level this direction doesn't really matter that much. It's good to have it level because your saw will sit level. But the main thing is, when you initially set it up, you want this rail to be completely flat all the way down. Because if it is like this here and like that down there, then you know that you're going to be going in a twisting motion. Because the chainsaw mill, the Alaskan mill, will just follow whatever the rails um, are. So I set it up that way. And I, I do the, the front and then the rear initially. And then once I get them, I run the lag bolt down in. But I don't take it all the way home with the, um, the electric drill. I leave a little bit of uh, threads left and I just hand tighten it. Because the thing about this is you can put so much torque on this that it actually will create you know, a bowing effect. You know, when I first started using this system, I actually mounted a piece of angle iron right here. And I would, I would bolt the angle iron and I would screw it in at the end here. And I'd do that at both ends. I thought, man, that'll be a great system. It's easy. The only problem is just the force, the torque from the screws pulling the angle iron in would actually cause the, the rails to bow upward in the middle. So that system didn't really work so well. But anyways, when you get it level flat across there, the next thing I do is I take a long level. And I'm not using this as a level per se. I'm just using it as a straight edge. This is a a six foot um, straight edge and I put it across here uh, believe it or not like I say these aluminum channels are flexible enough that if you don't you can just slightly adjust these up and next thing you know it's bowed this way or bowed that way but by fine-tuning it you can have it perfectly flat across here so now we know that there's no twist in it running the length and there's no height or uh, you know bow upward or downward here thing about it is, you know, as the chainsaw mill is going through here, not only do you have the weight of the mill itself, depending on the, um, the saw you have, as well as the Alaskan, so there's a lot of downward weight just on that, but also the, the torque. As that saw is going through here, I used to only secure it at the end, and I would see, as I'm going through the middle, the saw is actually torquing these bars to that side over there, just from the strength. So by having it secured at each um, spot, it secures it this way 
and that way. So you're you're pretty uh, good there. It takes a little bit of setup time to get it just right, but once again, it um, it's worth it because once you get the once you get the um, the thing set up nice and straight, that first cut means everything. Then you can go off a good uh, straight edge. After that, you don't need them anymore. So let me go ahead. I've already uh, warmed up my chainsaw. We'll just run the first slice. Now, also keep in mind that on this particular setup, based on the lag bolts I have and the screws that I have, in order to have the chainsaw meal set up here and the chain to cut down here is a fixed five and three eighths. That's what my first cut always is on here. So you know that no matter how high up or low you have it adjusted, that lag bolt is never going to be lower than five and three eighths. That's on my particular setup. You know, if I use different lag screws, it would be a different um, amount because it, it wouldn't be any fun to saw into the uh, <laughs> the lag bolt. All right, let me uh, fire this up. The rail itself is nine feet. This log is eight feet. So it leaves me a little torque to start out. I can set this here. I also have my wedges ready. They're about one eighth inches at the small end and at about three eighths at the large end, half inch.
record it as I exit. particular log blew down in a storm about a year ago it'll be a year ago about a month and a half and um, the outer bark had actually started decaying worms and, and all that stuff starts eating away at it but it's still good uh, for uh, and I need to build some goat enclosures and a few dog boxes things like that so for that it's still plenty good um, I was gonna, did you see this is southern yellow pine which is what I like to, to mill just see what's that so it's about about 14 inches across there a lot of times what i do now is i set my granberg to the depth down here of the height i want maybe if i was just making a big beam i would just go ahead now set it down to about here maybe you know maybe about a nine or nine and a half inch beam and uh take that off and then slide out that slab and then take it off, uh, take the, Gramber the uh, Alaskan mill off, the uh, sawmill, and put on the Granberg edging mill. And I just slide it at that point right off to the edge of my log support and just slice off and get my square edge. I can either get uh, just square up one side, and then if I'm going to use these on like the table saw in the workshop, I can cut them to whatever width I want. At least I got a square edge here or um, go down and just cut through and through just the, um, the straight cut and then um, to optimize my amount of, of, uh, of board feet put all the edges as close to possible to uh, the edge as possible and then edge them and it might you know save a few inches here and there but the thing about this is um, when I mill the next board We'll see just exactly how accurate that this will be. 